series then, and uh, this time we're carrying on with this railway station one, uh, London Railway with a uh, 1950s scene of uh, three lads um, train spotting here as the steam engine comes in. Black ground this time, just drawn it on with some pastel, so we'll have to move that as I'm shifting it with the acrylics we're going to use. I'll show you the palette shortly, um, but I won't show it to you until I've actually finished in this case. Or I'll make the palette when I've actually finished because I'm not quite sure how many colours I'm really going to use on this. Uh, I know that um, it's a black and white photograph so I'm going to have to make the colours up myself. Uh, and I want to try and take it back into sort of back into a uh, sort of early colour photograph stage, a sort of more um, a more retro piece. Uh, so not just black and white or sepia, but uh, with a more period feel to it. So a larger palette. Let's just see how it goes anyway, it'd be rather fun. So as you see I'm doing all different shapes now, I'm doing tall ones, I'm doing long ones, I've got four little square ones to do shortly. I want to try and get all of this done before I go back to France, um, get this more commercial work out of the way, and then I can relax over there doing some more landscapes and um, loosen up a bit. Okay, I've got about a half inch um, filbert here I'm going to start with. And I like to start with the sky on something like this. Oh, what sort of sky we would have? We want a slightly misty, um, broken colour, I think. Very light cobalt blue. And work into the dark with that. Once the acrylic is dry, of course, these dark marks that are left behind, I can actually um, wipe the chalk away with a damp cloth a bit of working up. I don't want the dark showing through in this case. In some of my paintings I actually allow the black to show through to make a coherence or make a texture, but in this case we don't want that. Nice today, I can sit down for once. Normally I have to stand up for a painting, but just today I can, I can sit and uh, work at this. Broken colour in this case is when we put in one colour over another and letting the other show through, so it's like a dotty effect in a way. Uh, like the Impressionists did, and if we make little dots of colour or strokes of colour, then we get a second colour appearing, fooling the eye. In other words, if I put red and yellow dots together, we should get the effect of orange or blue and yellow, and we get the effect of green and so on. So I'm going to work over the surface of this with other colours in a moment. Right, let's start doing just that. I don't want to go uh, much brighter than that. I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise now. So let the warm show through the cool, get a nice sunny sky. So it's a bit cooler as it comes down, a bit warmer at the top. I want to start coming down to um, some slightly warmer tints into a sort of mistier cream. So I'm going to take a little bit of magenta now. blending those strokes in slightly, especially around these outer edges here. I want to bring the light in towards the middle a bit more. Now I'm going to use a um, very warm cream to start to get the effects of a lighter sky. So white again, a little touch of yellow ochre. I'm going to leave it cool into the background here. Try to bring in some warmth into the sky up here. Mix that with the blue a bit, pink a bit, just make it a bit lighter there. Let's just soften it down a bit and bring these this sort of misty cloud down into, into the smoke of the steam engine as I come down the same right down through here. Coming down to the side of that steam engine up through into these signals slightly. Just using the paint a little bit thinner and scumbling with the brush a bit as well. In other words, I'm using the brush, slightly dry brush in places to drag it across this. So we get this hazy effect of both steam and background cloud. Blending up there, that corner, leave the eye in from here down here. And the same this way, we'll leave the eye in so we've got steam coming through, light coming through that way into there. You can lead the eye down into the train. 
Right, that's our sky set up. Now we've got to start on background tones and I want to just sell it again. It's going to be fairly misty these effects, so we're going to work on these tones here just mistily appearing out of the gloom. All I've used so far is cobalt blue, white, a little touch of um, turquoise, uh, yellow ochre and a wee touch of magenta. That's all I've painted with so far. And again, I'm going to take a little bit now of um, ultramarine blue and do a little bit warmer with my blues into the background here. The details, just by a few flicks and indications of things, we don't want to be going into great detail. I missed out some sky here as well. Get back in there in just a moment. This movie purple colour is going to permeate quite a lot here. I think we'll get rid of this chalk as well, which is good. I'll fix it in, and uh, the chalk is actually mixing in with my paint here, which is quite fun. A little rigger brush for that later. This is just to get the basics. Now I'm going to take a little bit now of burnt sienna. So I just want to warm up uh, these cools as they come forward here. A little magenta, a little ultramarine blue, a little burnt sienna, a tad of white, just to get our glazes going here. Again, we'll start to bring in these blue greys from the distance here. So we've used a paint paint up here and now I'm using glazes down here. And I can lighten up on those more and more and more with these glazes. Remember that like watercolour, when you put more glazes on they become darker. With this, if I put more lighter glazes on it becomes lighter. So I can come across these like that, the second coating, and it's going to make it actually lighter, not darker. Surprisingly, what you can do with just one brush. You don't have to keep changing brushes. If you make a blade of the brush, it will work quite well. Doing a thin line like this. Again, this is why I used these filberts for so long in my life because I can, they're so versatile. I can do a lot of what I want with them. Don't the texture we can do later. Right, that's established quite a lot now. Let's uh, work some glazes over this lot now. Got a little bit warmer still. Again, I'll take some. Ultramarine, some ultramarine and a, a little touch of the burnt sienna to use as a glaze. I'm going to warm it up a bit. We touch the magenta again just to keep it fairly warm. And we'll just glaze in over, over these. Keeping it warm. And we'll wash the chalk out at the moment, which is good. And I'll put the darks back in again as well shortly. Big brush for this now. I'm going to put some glazes under here. Come right in. I'll move them a bit and move them around. While it's still just damp, we can get the acrylics working around for us. Right down to here. Alright. Give it a little brush. It's very useful at the moment for doing those washes. Painting possibly a little more carefully than usual, a little bit more figuratively this time. This is the blue grey now that I'm using. I'm using a bit more of the blue into the grey, in other words, to uh, play against the warmth in the foreground of the warm grey. By just playing with little highlights and impressions, we can start to get the feeling of the engine chalk now so I'm going to cut my brush and wash it in or wash it out on these areas so I've just got paint left or fixed colour left. And again just using the the moment the ultramarine and the burnt sienna to achieve my mid-tones on the figures here. Before I do that I'll have to paint some of those light. Right, let's see if we can drop in some of these railway lines with these brushes, with this rigger. 
without making a mess. I'm going to have to come right through here. So, and they get thicker as they come down. So as I come down here, I have to come out wider and also reach across more with the brush. It also has to come down to here. I missed that bit there. It gets wider as it comes. Again, I can go darker out of there, and I've got to make sure that I come wider here again. Hope I'm coming wide enough. Oh, so I should be. That was a bit thicker there. That wasn't a good line, was it? Let's see if I can do better by resting my hand there a bit flatter. Silver of those tracks, and it's sinking a bit as it comes on. So I've got to go back in and touch up some of these again. I can see that's bright on one or two of them. Like just here, it's very, very bright coming down there. It's a lot brighter now. Whether I can get this to work on these lines is another matter because these ones obviously are a lot wider. So. When I go up these, I've got to press harder to make the brush thicker. Look, some of this fine work is very necessary here, because we've got to get these lovely curves that are coming around from here. Right, having done that, we need to go back to the darks again, and I have to make the dark up again. This time I'm going to take some black directly and a bit of the brown and a wee bit of the blue because I want these to be very dark and use the rigger again. And you've got to get the paint just nice and juicy for this job because if it's too solid you can't get it to flow down the brush and onto the board. Bring that board forward slightly. Let's just see what we can do here now. Not easy because I may even need to use a, a different term brush, but let's see what we can do with this one. Bring that dark right down here. Rig a brush again. And we'll continue these lines down. This is one beauty about painting on board as well. It's being nice and smooth. We can get these lovely details painted. I'll bring those lines across there, more detail. So I'm doing quite a bit of detail in this one. More than I'd normally do on a picture, as you're well aware. Being an impressionist, I tend to want to do just that and do an impression rather than doing too much in the way of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Now that I've got rid of chalk I can start to get some of these colours a lot better. You can see I'm making the darks darker now. Start pulling out some of these shapes. And I'll start working on those figures a bit more carefully next. Right, let's start on some flesh terms on the children. I'm not going into too much detail. I want to say things in as few a strokes as possible. It's much better to have one or two right marks than dozens of wrong ones which are useless to us. I want the sort of grey of his socks, which is likely to be more blue, so I'm going to make that a, a blue-grey again using my ultramarine and a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to go just slightly yellower on, um, into that blue to make a slightly greeny tint using the yellow ochre on the trousers. Magenta. And yellow ochre and white. Let's see how light we can go just on the legs here where I want it to really catch the light a bit more. Maybe a little bit too pink, that will look in a minute, but we'll just have a look and see. Don't want it too bright in this light. I need to cool that down just a bit.
take some of the turquoise and the white and we'll mix that with it to give a cool a nice cool grey that coming down here and reflecting. Looks lighter around there in a moment. We'll just find the creases and think a bit in his trousers here just to find these areas, his elbows up here. Maybe a wee touch of purple now. We need to have stronger colours here in the foreground um, to bring out these lighter ones in the background. What's it like with, we'll just keep experimenting on this till we get it right. What's it like with a bit more yellow ochre in it maybe? So I can start building up in slightly more opaque paints now. Still playing between the Right, now let's start to put a few more details into it. I've <laughs> got the basic tones uh, there, I think. I'll back in with the darks a bit more later as well. Right, I need to find a little brush to start doing some lettering here. I should make some more, I think. I think I can have enough there. Yellow Luca, about Sienna, a little touch of white. A wee touch of magenta just to warm it up a fraction and then thin that right down. So what I've got is a glaze. That should do it. Trying to paint something in perspective here, lettering in perspective. Which isn't easy to do. It has to go up even more in perspective than I thought. Down in perspective more than I thought here. Without actually drawing lines in, it's, if you see, strengthen up the bottoms or parts of the lettering just so it looks like the sign is getting slightly worn. Right, that's that little bit. Now I've got it down to a pointy brush. Lettering's getting larger as I go across, can't look at that, can we? Now I'm going to try a little bit of yellow onto this. Not too much, just a wee bit to tint some of these here before we go back into the blacks. And I'd like a little bit of the, the red there as well. Um, so I'm going to take just slightly purer colours, only for this bit. Just to, so all I should have to do now really, once I've got these last highlights done, so um, I've got all of these done earlier. They disappeared more than I thought they were going to. I thought they were going to show up better than this, but um, wrong again. There, now, play back with the cools. The reflections on some of the clothing just need to be picking up some of the light bows here and there, things like that. Too, too light maybe. 
these little bits of dark now that I'm putting on will make the other darks look lighter because these are darker. So it's again light against dark, rough against smooth, cool against warm. Playing these opposites, now it's they've got a lovely light and a three dimensional feel to it. So a completely different painting again to what we've been doing before. Different palette, different technique. A very interesting way to work. And I think that is, for me, about done. I don't want much more on this. We can just keep touching up some of these darks to give a bit more shape to things over here. I don't want to draw the eye across this side too much though. Signature, details, different painting altogether, quite fun to do, and I'll uh, put the palette down now and come back on that to show you. So let's have a closer look, shall we?